Good morning, I'm Daniela Barros. Thanks for the opportunity to present the light antidiode for the treatment of the Turner syndrome of menopause in breast cancer survivors. Those are the preliminary results of a randomized double-blind clinical trial. Those are our disclosures. The Turner syndrome of menopause affects up to 70% of breast cancer patients and available treatment, such as lubricants and measures, do not provide a systemic relief of the symptoms. Photobiomodulation can provide fibroblast stimulation and increase microcirculation. Then, a light antidiode treatment appears as an alternative to improve vaginal epithelial tissue. We hypothesize that lead has a positive effect on cell maturation and vaginal microenvironment, promoting better quality of life and improving sexual function. This trial has two core primary endpoints, measurement of vaginal cell maturation index and sexual function. And this presentation is intended to introduce the preliminary results of the sexual function evaluation. The secondary endpoints are the analysis of the outcome on self genital image, quality of life, and urinary symptoms of breast cancer survived with GSM. And it was appropriately registered at clinical trials with all participants signed informed consent. This is a randomized double-blind study that includes women aged between 18 to 65 years with pathological proof breast cancer with at least one symptom of GSM and at least one clinical sign. The exclusion criteria are pregnancy, hormone replacement less than six months, and an open vaginal phototherapy treatment less than three months. Progression of cancer to metastatic disease through the protocol, the presence of vaginal infection or chronic neurological disease that preclude to be on gynecological position and present comprehension. The procedures considered of a baseline gynecological exam with pH measurement and cytobrush collect, female sexual function index, and another questionnaire. Then patients were randomized for lead or control group and the intervention consisted of five weekly sections of eight million of lead device covering vulvar and intravaginal treatment area. In addition, pelvic floor muscle training was performed on the same day of lead or shen treatment. Reassessment were done after three weeks and then with one and two months later. Required sample size calculated was 58 patients. Those are the characteristics of the blue lead device of GN company with simultaneous intravaginal and vulva potential of treatment. The enrollment of this trial started at January 2019 and until now, 12 patients were screened and randomized, seven for the lead group and five for the control group. Here in table one, we can observe the graphics and clinical features. The minimum wage was 49.5 and 45.6 years, respectively. In the lab group, 85% of participants were in menopause in comparison to 40% in control group. About 85% in the lab group and 100% in control group were considered with satisfactory perineal awareness. Regarding urinary symptoms, about 57% of lab group present urinary urgency against 60% in control group. Nocturia was observed in about 43% and 40%, and urinary continence was seen in 57% and 20%, respectively. Here in Table 2, we can observe differences on urinary and sexual complaints questionnaire after treatment with statistics significance on USF and ICQSF. Up to now, it's early to identify statistical differences between groups. However, it is possible to observe that FSFI score had doubled after treatment. Meanwhile, the other two score recorded, USF and ICKSF, have also shown an improvement at the same follow-up period. In conclusion, this trial showed promises benefits of a hybrid original device capable of treating a wide genital area with the potential to bring relief of sexual and urinary symptoms for breast cancer survivor patients. Thank you.